My name is Clara, and I never thought I'd be the kind of woman who eavesdrops on her husband's phone calls. But here I am, pressed against the kitchen door, my heart pounding as I strain to catch every word. She's clueless, Lydia. Absolutely clueless. Jack's voice drifts through the crack, dripping with disdain. Clara's so caught up in her little homemaker routine, she wouldn't notice if I danced naked in front of her with a neon sign. I clamp a hand over my mouth to stifle a gasp. Lydia. That's the name of his new assistant, the one he's been working late nights with for the past few months. And what about Anna? A woman's voice, silky and amused. Doesn't she notice daddy's absence? Jack's laugh is cold, unfamiliar. Please. The kid's seven. As long as I bring her a new toy every week, she's happy. Clara does all the heavy lifting anyway. My fingers dig into the doorframe, splinters pricking my skin. How dare he? How dare he speak about our daughter like that? You know, Jack continues, his voice lowering to a conspiratorial whisper. Sometimes I wonder why I even bother coming home. It's all so mundane, predictable. But you, Lydia, you're anything but predictable. Flatterer, Lydia purrs. So, when are you going to leave her? The silence that follows is deafening. I lean in closer, my ear practically pressed against the door. Soon, Jack finally says, I just need to figure out how to do it without losing everything. You know how these things go. She'd take me for all I'm worth. I stumble back from the door, my legs suddenly weak. The kitchen spins around me, familiar surfaces blurring into a nauseating whirl of color. I grab the counter to steady myself, knocking over a vase of fresh-cut flowers. They scatter across the floor, petals crushed beneath my feet. Clara? Jack calls out, his voice sharp with alarm. Is that you? I freeze, panic rising in my throat. What do I do? Confront him now? Pretend I didn't hear? Before I can decide, the kitchen door swings open. Jack stands there, phone still in hand, his face a mask of practiced concern. Honey, are you all right? I heard a crash. I look up at him, this stranger wearing my husband's face. Fifteen years of marriage, and I've never seen him so clearly. I'm fine. I managed to choke out. Just clumsy. Knocked over the flowers. Jack's shoulders relax, relief evident in his eyes. He thinks I don't know. He thinks I'm still as clueless, predictable Clara. Let me help you clean that up, he says, already reaching for the broom. No, the word comes out sharper than I intended. I force a smile, softening my tone. No, it's okay. I've got it. Weren't you on a call? Jack hesitates, his eyes searching my face. For a moment, I'm terrified he'll see right through me, see the rage and betrayal boiling just beneath the surface. But he doesn't. Of course he doesn't. I'm just his mundane, predictable wife, after all. Right, he says, backing out of the kitchen. I should get back to that. Important client. As the door swings shut behind him, I sink to the floor amidst the scattered flowers. Tears blur my vision, but I blink them away furiously. This isn't the time for crying. This is the time for action. I pick up a crushed rose, its deep red petals stain darker, where my tears have fallen. As I stare at it, something hardens inside me. A resolve, cold and unyielding as steel. Jack thinks I'm clueless? Predictable? Well, he's about to learn just how wrong he is. I may be a homemaker, but I'm also a mother. And there's nothing more dangerous than a mother protecting her child. I stand up, brushing dirt from my knees. It's time to show Jack exactly what his mundane, predictable wife is capable of. Let the games begin. I sit at the kitchen table, a cup of coffee growing cold between my hands as I stare at our wedding photo. Jack's arm is around my waist, his smile genuine and warm. Where did that man go? Mommy, look what I drew. Anna's voice breaks through my reverie. She bounds into the kitchen, a colorful drawing clutched in her small hands. I force a smile, pushing aside my dark thoughts. Let's see, sweetheart. Anna proudly displays her artwork, a stick figure family holding hands. That's you, me, and daddy, she explains, pointing to each figure. My heart clenches. 
If only she knew the truth. It's beautiful, Anna. I manage, pulling her into a hug. Why don't you go hang it on the fridge? As she skips away, I'm hit by a wave of memories. Jack and I on our honeymoon, laughing as we got caught in a sudden rainstorm. The day we brought Anna home from the hospital, Jack's eyes filled with tears of joy. When did it all start to change? I think back to the subtle shifts I'd ignored. The late nights at the office that became more frequent. The way his eyes would dart to his phone whenever it buzzed. The gradual emotional distance that I'd chalked up to work stress. God, I'd been so blind. The front door opens and Jack's voice calls out, I'm home. Anna squeals with delight, running to greet him. I stay seated, stealing myself. Jack enters the kitchen, Anna perched on his hip. He sets her down and moves to kiss me, but I turn my head at the last second, his lips grazing my cheek instead. He frowns. Everything okay? I nod, not trusting myself to speak. Jack's frown deepens, but he doesn't push it. Daddy, want to see my drawing? Anna tugs at his sleeve. Sure, princess, he says, following her to the fridge. I watch them, anger bubbling up inside me. How can he stand there, playing the doting father, when just yesterday he dismissed Anna as easily placated by toys? It's great, sweetie, Jack says, ruffling Anna's hair. Hey, why don't you go play in your room for a bit? I need to talk to mommy. My pulse quickens as Anna leaves. Jack turns to me, concern etched on his face. Clara, what's going on? You've been acting strange all day. I meet his gaze, searching for any trace of the man I married. Have I? I hadn't noticed. I guess I've just been distracted. Jack sits across from me, reaching for my hand. I pull away. Talk to me, he pleads. Whatever it is, we can work it out. For a moment, I'm tempted to confront him right then and there. But no, I need more. I need irrefutable proof. It's nothing. I lie, standing up. I'm just tired. I think I'll lie down for a bit. As I leave the kitchen, I hear Jack sigh heavily. Good. Let him worry. In our bedroom, I close the door and lean against it, my resolve strengthening. I won't let him gaslight me. I won't let him make me doubt what I heard. I move to my closet, pushing aside hangers until I reach the back. There, hidden behind old shoeboxes, is a small safe. I'd bought it years ago to store important documents. Now, it would serve a new purpose. I open it and place my phone inside, the recording of Jack's conversation safely stored on it. This is just the beginning, I think, as I close the safe. Jack may think he's clever, but he has no idea who he's dealing with. I'm not just a wife or a mother. I'm a woman scorned, and I will not rest until I've uncovered every last bit of his deception. As I hear Anna's laughter floating up from downstairs, my determination solidifies. I'll protect her, no matter what it takes. And in the process, I'll reclaim the life and dignity Jack thought he could steal from me. Let the hunt begin. The next morning, I wake before dawn, my mind already racing with plans. While Jack sleeps, oblivious, I slip out of bed and head to his office. I pause at Anna's room, peeking in to see her peaceful face. For her, I remind myself, this is all for her. In Jack's office, I boot up his computer. My hands shake as I type in his password, Anna's birthday. At least he remembered that. I start digging through his emails, looking for any correspondence with Lydia. Nothing obvious jumps out, but I notice a pattern of deleted messages. Clever, Jack. But not clever enough. I pull out a USB drive and start copying his entire email archive. As the files transfer, I rifle through his desk drawers. In the bottom one, I find a stack of credit card statements. Bingo. I scan through the charges, my stomach churning as I spot several expensive restaurant bills and hotel charges. All on days Jack claimed to be working late. The computer chimes, signaling the file transfer is complete. I quickly shut everything down, leaving no trace of my investigation. Back in our bedroom, Jack is still snoring softly. I slip the USB drive and credit card statements into my safe, then crawl back into bed, my skin crawling at his proximity. Hours later, I'm in the kitchen making pancakes when Anna bounces in. Mommy, can we go to the park today? 
she asks, her eyes bright with hope. I smile, grateful for the distraction. Of course, sweetie. Let's have breakfast first. As we eat, Jack stumbles in, looking hungover. Morning, he grunts, reaching for the coffee. Daddy, we're going to the park. Anna exclaims. Jack winces at her volume. That's nice, princess. I've got to head to the office, though. Big project due. Anna's face falls. But it's Saturday. I know, I'm sorry. Next time, okay? He kisses the top of her head and heads for the door, not even glancing at me. As soon as he's gone, I turn to Anna. Hey, how about we make it a special day? Park, ice cream, and maybe even a movie? Her eyes light up. Really? You're the best, mommy. At the park, I watch Anna play, my heart swelling with love. How could Jack miss this? How could he choose anything over our daughter's laughter? Clara? Is that you? I turn to see Sarah, an old friend from college. We exchange hugs and catch up, her eyes widening as I mention Jack's frequent absences. Clara, she says hesitantly, I don't want to overstep, but I saw Jack last week at a restaurant downtown. He was with a woman and they looked close. My breath catches. Blonde? Tall? Sarah nods, looking worried. Clara, is everything okay? I force a smile. Everything's fine. Thanks for telling me, Sarah. As she walks away, I clench my fists, anger boiling inside me. Another piece of evidence, another nail in Jack's coffin. That night, after tucking Anna in, I sit at the kitchen table, surrounded by printouts of emails and credit card statements. I've created a timeline of Jack's betrayal, each lie and secret rendezvous meticulously documented. My phone buzzes, a text from Jack. Working late again. Don't wait up. I laugh bitterly. Of course he is. I pick up my phone, hesitating for a moment before dialing a number. Hello, a gruff voice answers. Mr. Daniels? This is Clara Thompson. I'd like to hire your services as a private investigator. There's a pause. What exactly are you looking to investigate, Mrs. Thompson? I take a deep breath. I need evidence of my husband's affair. As I hang up, I feel a strange mix of sadness and determination. This is at the point of no return. But as I glance at Anna's latest drawing on the fridge, I know I'm doing the right thing. Jack thinks he's won, that he's outsmarted me. But he has no idea what's coming. I may be just a homemaker, but I'm about to become his worst nightmare. I've become a master of deception, living a double life that would make Jack proud if he knew. By day, I'm the perfect wife and mother. By night, I'm a relentless investigator, piecing together the shattered remains of my marriage. It's a Tuesday evening when fate hands me an unexpected gift. Jack's in his study, door ajar, engrossed in another important phone call. I'm walking past with a basket of laundry when I hear Lydia's name. My heart races as I set down the basket and pull out my phone, hitting record. I lean against the wall, straining to catch every word. Lydia, baby, you know I can't tonight. Jack's voice oozes with false regret. Clara's been suspicious lately. I need to play the dutiful husband for a while. I clench my fists, willing myself to stay silent. Of course I miss you, he continues. God, the things I want to do to you right now. I squeeze my eyes shut, fighting back nausea. Clara, please, Jack scoffs. She's clueless. Probably thinks I'm on a business call right now. Sometimes I wonder if she even has a brain in that pretty little head of hers. White hot rage courses through me. I want to burst in, to confront him, to make him eat those words. But I hold back. This is too valuable. Look, I promise I'll make it up to you this weekend, Jack says. I'll tell Clara I have a conference. We'll have the whole weekend to ourselves. Just you and me, baby. I've heard enough. I stop the recording and retreat to our bedroom, my mind reeling. Once inside, I play back the conversation, each word a dagger to my heart. But beneath the pain, a cold determination takes root. This is it, the smoking gun I've been waiting for. I save the recording to my secret email account and delete it from my phone. Then I head downstairs, plastering on a smile as I hear Jack emerge from his study. Hey, honey, he says, 
wrapping his arms around me from behind. Sorry about that call. Work's been crazy lately. I turn in his embrace, meeting his eyes. No problem. I understand. Jack smiles, relief evident on his face. You're the best, you know that? I don't know what I'd do without you. I force a laugh. Probably starve. Speaking of which, dinner's almost ready. Can you get Anna? As Jack heads upstairs, I return to the stove, my mind racing. I now have irrefutable proof of his affair and his contempt for me. The question is, what do I do with it? Over dinner, I watch Jack interact with Anna, noting the genuine affection in his eyes. It's the one thing I can't reconcile. How can he love her so much and yet be willing to tear apart her family? Daddy, can we go to the zoo this weekend? Anna asks, her eyes shining with hope. Jack hesitates, glancing at me. I'm sorry, princess. I have a conference this weekend, but maybe next week, okay? Anna's face falls, and I feel a surge of protective anger. Actually, I interject. Why don't Anna and I go to the zoo ourselves? We could make it a girl's day out. Anna's excitement is palpable, and even Jack looks relieved. That's a great idea, he says. You two have fun. Later that night, as Jack snores beside me, I lie awake, formulating my plan. I can't confront him, yet I need more. I need to know exactly where he'll be this weekend, who he'll be with, what he'll be doing. I reach for my phone, pulling up the contact for Mr. Daniels, the private investigator. I have new information, I text. I need surveillance this weekend. Every detail, every moment. The response comes quickly. Understood. I'll take care of it. I set down the phone, a grim smile on my face. Jack thinks he's so clever, juggling his two lives. But his house of cards is about to come crashing down, and I'll be there to watch it burn. The weekend arrives, and with it, a storm of conflicting emotions. As I help Jack pack for his conference, my fingers tremble with barely contained rage. Every lie he tells, every casual kiss on my cheek, feels like a mockery of our vows. I'll miss you both, Jack says, hugging Anna tightly. Have fun at the zoo, princess. I watch them, my heart breaking for Anna. She doesn't deserve this deception. As Jack's car disappears down the driveway, I spring into action. Ready for our adventure, sweetie? I ask Anna, forcing cheer into my voice. At the zoo, I'm torn between genuine joy at Anna's excitement and the constant buzz of my phone. Mr. Daniel sends updates throughout the day, each one a dagger to my heart. Subject checked into Rosewood Hotel, room 412. Subject met blonde woman in hotel bar. Proceeding to room. I clench my jaw, focusing on Anna's delight at the elephants. She deserves this day of innocence before her world shatters. That evening, after tucking Anna in, I meet Mr. Daniels in a quiet cafe. He slides a manila envelope across the table. It's all there, Mrs. Thompson. Photos, video, audio recordings. Are you sure you want to see this? I nod, my throat tight. I need to know everything. At home, I spread the contents of the envelope across the kitchen table. Photos of Jack and Lydia entering the hotel, intimate moments captured through windows, transcripts of their conversations. It's all so clinical, yet each piece of evidence feels like a physical blow. One photo catches my eye, Jack and Lydia at dinner, his hand caressing hers. The look in his eyes. It's how he used to look at me. Tears blur my vision, but I blink them away. No more crying. No more weakness. I stay up all night, meticulously organizing the evidence. By dawn, I have a comprehensive timeline of Jack's betrayal, from the first suspicious late night to this damning weekend tryst. Sunday evening, Jack returns home all smiles and false cheer. How is the zoo? He asks, kissing Anna's forehead. It was awesome, Anna exclaims. We saw lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, Jack chuckles and for a moment, I see a flicker of the man I married. How is your conference, dear? I ask, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. Jack launches into a detailed account of fictional seminars and networking events. I listen marveling at his ability to lie so effortlessly. That night, as Jack sleeps beside me, blissfully unaware of the storm about to break, 
I make my final decision. I can't let this continue. I can't let Anna grow up in a house built on lies. Monday morning, I wait until Jack leaves for work and Anna's at school. Then I call my lawyer. Sandra, it's Clara Thompson. I need to file for divorce. There's a pause on the other end. Clara, are you sure? This is a big step. I'm sure, I reply, my voice stronger than I feel. I have evidence of infidelity. Substantial evidence. We spend the next hour discussing logistics, custody arrangements, division of assets, the legal process ahead. By the time we hang up, I feel both drained and oddly empowered. I spend the rest of the day in a daze, going through the motions of my usual routine. As I fold laundry and prepare dinner, I'm acutely aware that these mundane tasks represent the last vestiges of my life as Jack's wife. When I pick up Anna from school, her innocent chatter about her day feels like a lifeline to normalcy. I hug her tightly, knowing that soon, I'll have to shatter her world to save her from a greater hurt. As we pull into the driveway, I see Jack's car already there. Unusual for him to be home this early. My heart races as I realize this is it. The moment of truth has arrived sooner than I expected. I take a deep breath, steeling myself for the confrontation to come. It's time to reclaim my life, my dignity, and my future. For myself and for Anna. No more lies. No more deception. It ends today. As I pull into the driveway, my heart hammers against my ribs. Jack's car is there, hours earlier than usual. Anna chatters excitedly in the back seat, oblivious to the tension radiating from me. Daddy's home early, she squeals, unbuckling her seatbelt before I can even park. I force a smile. Honey, wait for me before you go inside, okay? We enter the house, and Jack emerges from the kitchen, a strange expression on his face. Hey, you too, he says, his voice oddly strained. Anna, why don't you go play in your room for a bit? I need to talk to mommy. Anna looks between us, sensing the tension. But daddy, you're never home this early. Can't we play together? Jack's face softens. Soon, princess. I promise. Just give mommy and me a few minutes, okay? As Anna reluctantly heads upstairs, I steal myself. This is it. The moment I've been dreading and anticipating in equal measure. Jack turns to me, his face a mask of guilt and fear. Clara, we need to talk. I laugh bitterly. Oh, now you want to talk. After months of lies and deception. His eyes widen. What are you, Dash? Save it, Jack. I cut him off, my voice ice cold. I know everything. About Lydia, about your conferences, about how you really feel about me and our marriage. Jack pales, stumbling back as if I'd physically struck him. Clara, I can explain Dash. Explain what? I spit, my carefully contained rage finally boiling over. Explain how you've been lying to my face for months? How you've been sneaking around with your assistant while I've been here, taking care of our daughter, believing in our marriage? It's not what you think, Jack pleads, reaching for me. I recoil from his touch. Don't you dare, I hiss. I heard you, Jack. I heard how you talk about me when you think I can't hear. Clueless Clara, right? Well, guess what? I'm not as clueless as you thought. I pull out my phone, playing the recording of his conversation with Lydia. Jack's face crumples as he hears his own voice, dripping with contempt for me and lust for her. How could you? I whisper, tears finally breaking through my anger. How could you do this to us? To Anna? Jack sinks into a chair, head in his hands. I'm sorry, he mumbles. I never meant for this to happen. It just... It just did. Things don't just happen, Jack, I say, my voice steadier now. You made choices. Choices that destroyed our family. A small voice from the stairs makes us both freeze. Mommy? Daddy? Why are you fighting? We turn to see Anna, tears streaming down her face. My heart shatters all over again. Oh, sweetie, I say, moving towards her. But she backs away. Is daddy leaving? She asks, her lower lip trembling. Like Samantha's daddy did? Jack stands, reaching for her. No, princess, I'm not Dash. Don't lie to her. I interrupt my voice sharp. Not anymore. 
Anna looks between us, confusion and fear in her eyes. I want us to be together, she says, her voice small and broken. Can't we just be happy? In that moment, seeing the pain in my daughter's eyes, something inside me solidifies. This isn't just about me anymore. It's about Anna and the example I set for her. I kneel down, meeting Anna's gaze. Sweetie, sometimes grown-ups make mistakes. Big mistakes that hurt the people they love. And sometimes the best thing to do is to start over. But I don't want to start over, Anna sobs. I want things to stay the same. I pull her into a hug, feeling her small body shake with sobs. Over her head, I meet Jack's gaze. The guilt and regret in his eyes do nothing to soften my resolve. We can't stay the same, Anna, I say softly. But I promise you, no matter what happens, mommy and daddy both love you very much. That will never change. As I hold my crying daughter, with my soon-to-be ex-husband standing helplessly by, I know that the real battle is just beginning. But for Anna's sake, for my own sake, I'm ready to fight. No more lies. No more pretending. It's time for the truth, no matter how much it hurts. The next morning, I wake up on the couch, my eyes puffy from a night of intermittent tears and fitful sleep. Jack had retreated to the guest room, leaving me to comfort Anna until she finally drifted off. I make my way to the kitchen, where I find Jack nursing a cup of coffee. His eyes are bloodshot, his usually immaculate appearance disheveled. For a moment, I almost feel sorry for him. Almost. We need to talk, I say, my voice hoarse but steady. Jack nods, unable to meet my gaze. Clara, I dash. I hold up a hand, silencing him. No, Jack, you've done enough talking. Now it's my turn. I pull out a thick folder from my bag, the evidence I've collected over the past weeks. Photos, credit card statements, hotel receipts, and transcripts of recorded conversations spread across the kitchen table. Jack's face pales as he takes it all in. You hired a private investigator, he whispers, disbelief etched on his face. I did what I had to do, I reply coldly, to protect myself and our daughter from your lies. I play the recordings, his disdainful comments about me, his passionate declarations to Lydia. With each revelation, Jack seems to shrink in his chair. I've already spoken to a lawyer. I continue, my voice gaining strength. I'm filing for divorce. Jack's head snaps up. Divorce? Clara, please, we can work this out. I'll end things with Lydia, I'll go to counseling, anything you want. I laugh, a harsh, bitter sound. Anything I want? I wanted a faithful husband. I wanted a father who put his family first. I wanted the man I married, not this. Stranger sitting in front of me. Think about Anna, Jack pleads. She needs both her parents. I am thinking about Anna, I snap. I'm thinking about the example I want to set for her. I want her to know that she should never settle for being someone's second choice, that she deserves respect and honesty in her relationships. Jack reaches across the table, trying to take my hand. I pull away. Clara, I love you. I love our family. This thing with Lydia, it was a mistake. A stupid, terrible mistake. For a moment, I waver. Part of me wants to believe him, wants to cling to the remnants of our life together. But then I remember the contempt in his voice when he spoke about me to Lydia, the casual cruelty of his betrayal. No, Jack. I say, my voice firm. Love doesn't treat someone like this. Love doesn't lie and cheat and belittle. What you feel isn't love, it's ownership. You thought you could have it all. The devoted wife at home, the exciting mistress on the side. Well, not anymore. I stand up, gathering the evidence back into the folder. My lawyer will be in touch about the divorce proceedings. I think it's best if you move out today. Jack's face crumples. Where am I supposed to go? I'm sure Lydia would be happy to take you in. I reply, unable to keep the bitterness from my voice. After all, you two have so much in common, like a complete lack of moral compass. As if on cue, Anna's voice calls from upstairs. Mommy? Daddy? Jack moves to stand, but... I stop him with a look. I'll go. You start packing. I find Anna in her room, clutching her favorite stuffed animal. Is daddy leaving? 
she asks, her lower lip trembling. I sit beside her on the bed, pulling her close. Yes, sweetie. Daddy's going to be living somewhere else for a while. Because of the fighting? I nod, struggling to find the right words. Sometimes, when grown-ups hurt each other very badly, they need to live apart to heal. Anna buries her face in my shoulder. Will Daddy still love me? My heart breaks all over again. Of course he will, baby. Daddy and I both love you very, very much. That will never change. As I hold my daughter, listening to the sounds of Jack packing downstairs, I feel a strange mix of grief and relief. The life I thought I had is over, shattered by betrayal and lies. But from the ashes of that life, I'm determined to build something new, something honest, something strong. For Anna. For myself. For the future we both deserve. Six months have passed since Jack moved out, and the world hasn't ended. In fact, it's slowly but surely getting better. I stand in our, my kitchen, sipping coffee and watching Anna play in the backyard. She's laughing, chasing butterflies with a net I bought her last week. The sound of her joy is a balm to my soul. The divorce proceedings were messy, as expected. Jack fought tooth and nail to maintain his image, but in the end, the evidence was overwhelming. His company pushed him out to avoid scandal, and most of our friends sided with me once the truth came to light. I won primary custody of Anna, with Jack getting every other weekend. It's been an adjustment for all of us, but Anna's resilience never ceases to amaze me. The doorbell rings, pulling me from my thoughts. I open it to find Sarah, my college friend who first tipped me off about Jack's affair. Ready for a volunteer shift? She asks, smiling warmly. I nod, grabbing my purse. Anna, I call. Time to go, sweetie. The local women's shelter has become my sanctuary these past months. Helping other women rebuild their lives has been instrumental in rebuilding my own. Today, Anna's coming with us to help sort donations. As we drive, I catch Anna's eye in the rearview mirror. Excited to help out today? She nods enthusiastically. Yeah. Miss Judy said I could help organize the toy donations this time. My heart swells with pride. Despite everything, Anna's kindness and empathy have only grown stronger. At the shelter, we're greeted by familiar faces. Women I've come to know and respect, each with their own story of survival. As we sort through clothes and toiletries, I overhear Anna chatting with another little girl, sharing her own experience of divorce with gentle wisdom beyond her years. It's okay to be sad, Anna says softly. But remember, it's not your fault. And your mom loves you so much. Tears prick my eyes, and I have to turn away for a moment to compose myself. Later that evening, after tucking Anna into bed, I sit on the porch with a glass of wine. The night is peaceful, stars twinkling overhead. For the first time in a long time, I feel truly at peace. My phone buzzes, a text from Jack. Anna left her favorite stuffed animal at my place. Can I drop it off tomorrow? I type back a quick affirmative, no longer feeling the sting of anger or betrayal at his name. It's been replaced by a calm indifference, tinged with pity for the life he threw away. As I sit there, I reflect on the journey of the past year. The pain, the anger, the fear, it all seems so distant now. In its place is a strength I never knew I possessed, a resilience forged in the fires of adversity. I think about the women at the shelter, about Anna, about myself. We're all survivors, in our own ways. And while the road hasn't been easy, I wouldn't change a thing. Because this journey has led me here, to a place of self-respect, of purpose, of genuine happiness. Tomorrow, I have a job interview at a local nonprofit. It's a far cry from my life as a homemaker, but I'm excited about the prospect of a new challenge. Anna's thriving in school, making new friends, and excelling in her studies. We're building a new life, brick by brick, day by day. As I finish my wine and head inside, I catch sight of my reflection in the window. The woman staring back at me is stronger, wiser, and more alive than she's ever been. She's a survivor, a fighter, a mother. She's me, and for the first time in a long time, I'm proud of who I see. I close the door behind me, ready to face whatever tomorrow brings.
because I know now, without a doubt, that I can handle anything life throws my way. After all, I'm Clara Thompson, and I'm nobody's second choice.